Once you have faith, then you must declare your faith publicly. You can't have a hidden faith. But God, please give me the rhema every day. And also prayer is the key to the great revival. Rest in glory, Dr. Paul Yonggi. Here is his 10 keys to breakthrough. Dr. Paul Yonggi is the owner of the largest church in the world. He recently passed into glory. Let us listen to his 10 key to breakthrough. Once you have faith, then you must declare your faith publicly. You can't have a hidden faith. You should have an open faith. Jesus said every time when he healed the sick, he said he sold the faith. You should show your faith to Jesus Christ through public declaration. You must speak the word. The word you speak will become the seed for your future. By you are speaking, you are planting the seed for the future. You plant the wrong seed, then you will harvest the wrong future. But when you plant the right kind of seed, then you will have abundance harvest. Many people, after having faith, then they deny their faith by a wrong profession of faith, by planting a wrong kind of seed, negative seed, then they harvest a destruction. You must see your future by your declaration. Every word you speak is that you are seeding the seed for your future. Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. How do you bind and loose? By your spoken word, by your declaration. So heaven is depending upon your profession of the mouth. And so it is very important to declare the right kind of the confession of your faith. Then Moses prayed to the God. You know, very strangely, when Israelite, when they would fall into trouble, they would not pray. They would always complain. Complain to God and to Moses. But always Moses is the only one who prayed in this situation. You know, whenever you meet with a problem, always the sol solution is spiritual, not circumstantial. When you see God, God is all the answer. So the only one problem is spiritual problem. So Moses, instead of complaining, he knelt down and he prayed and sought the face of God. And God already prepared the solution because there was a tree growing right beside the pool. And God said, cut the branch and put into the water and the water would be sweetened. So he cut the branch and cast into the water. The water was chemically sweetened up. And all the people drank to the fullness of their stomach and they were happy. So I tell you, brothers and sisters, when you have problem, instead of complaining, sit down and look into your heart, confess your sin, then pray to the Lord. And when you reconcile yourself to God, and when you receive the will of the Lord, then God is the one who will take care of your problem and he will solve your problem. I myself personally wish to be really retired and the rest of, the rest of my life. But the Holy Spirit in my heart forced me to work for Christ even more. Every day I want to see the will of the Lord be done in my life. Even today I was praying that if I should rest from my old work or should I continue? The Spirit says to me that continue till you die. <laughs> many, many lay Christians, they are warming the bench only. But you should mobilize them. You should use them. When I especially come to the American Europe, the church is afraid of using women. But I am using women. Two-thirds of cell leaders are all women. Women are wonderful, wonderful workers for the Lord. And most of women consist of the church. And I think European church is losing a tremendous treasure because they don't use women. You know, I was amazed when I first came to the Europe, seeing that women are not used in the church. In Korea, 
For 5,000 years of history, women have had no voice at all. But Christian church began to free the women and use the women for church work because they are covered by the authority of the pastor. And so by the covering of the authority of the pastor, they could do any work being delegated by the pastor. The Bible says that I will pour forth of my spirit your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Bible says without vision the people perish. If you don't have any vision, then you can't produce anything in your future. As a young man, if young men lose vision, then he would become just a plain prodigal. He wouldn't produce anything in his future. As a family, if you lose your vision, then your family would be destroyed. As a nation, if you lose vision, then that nation would turn into a second-class nation. So as a church, as a Christian, if we lose our vision, then we are going to mark time and we are going to diminish. We are going to be destroyed utterly by the Satan. This is reason, without saving the Holy Spirit, we can exist as a church. And the main job of Holy Spirit is giving visions and dreams to each and every one of our heart and to the church so that we may ever lift up our head to see the end of the world and to see the unsaved humanity so that we may bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. Oh Lord, I thank you this bread. I thank you the word of God. I thank you the Logos because I receive all the information about God and kingdom of God through Bible. But God, please give me the rhema every day. Rhema is a word of God for the specific person at a specific time. And if we, by studying the logos, we give the information about kingdom of God to the people. But by rhema, they gain faith. Faith comes by hearing. So if you don't preach rhema, people do not catch faith to hold, to, to solve the problem. This reason, my, I'm desperate to receive rhema from the Lord. Wednesday, I have a Bible study. But Sunday, I've got to have word of God directly from him. Not written word, but spoken word. I want to hear his word. I go into pra prayer grotto and I wait before the Lord. God, speak out of the Bible. Speak through the Holy Spirit. I should have a spoken word instead of written word. Then, when I make message out of the that's a rhema, then I can really impart the faith into the heart of people. They receive the word, they believe, and they are encouraged. Because the Holy Spirit is present among us. He is the one who is carrying out ministry of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. And he is just waiting you to be bold enough to exercise your faith then the Spirit of the Lord is going to confirm the word. Because the Holy Spirit is another comforter. Jesus is first comforter, but the Holy Spirit is another comforter, exactly same kind of other. He is same kind of God as Jesus Christ is exactly another comforter. He is a comforter, Paracletus, the one who is being called alongside to help you 24 hours in every moment as you ask him to come and help. Because he is a gentleman, he wouldn't force himself upon you. He is there to help you and when you recognize and invite him, he is going to help you supernaturally. Then the Holy Spirit is there to have communion with you. Keep on having communion with Him. Have fellowship, have the partnership. Continue the transportation and recognize unity. Be conscious of the Holy Spirit every part of your life. And He's going to lead you, guide you, strengthen you, impart His knowledge, wisdom, discerning and power so that you may rise up in the power of Jesus Christ so that you may conquer your circumstances. And when you embrace the vision, the, the vision leads you, guides you, helps you to accomplish the goal. Brothers and sisters, don't forget this. When you embrace the vision, vision will make you. I embraced the 300 member in my heart very clear and prayed. Then, in three years, I had 500 members. 
Then God said, if you have 3,000 member goal in your heart, if you can embrace the 3,000 members, I will fulfill it. So I embraced the 3,000 goal. And I was praying and I was talking as if I were the pastor of 3,000. I was walking as if I were the pastor of 3,000. <laughs> Dignified. And I was speaking as if I was speaking to the 3,000. Many of my Christians would put finger into their ears. Pastor, you are talking to a few hundred and you are shouting too loud. But I said, no, you are making mistake. I'm speaking to 3,000. 1964, I was speaking to 3,000. Then God continually increased the goal vision to 6,000, 10,000, then 100,000, 300,000, half a million. Then God said, lift up your head, look to the north and south and east. If you could embrace the membership one million, I will fulfill it. So I'm in the process of arriving to the one million membership right now. Deity, you know, all of those uh, lay Christian men and women who have desire to work for the Lord, they have the place to work in a uh, traditional church, even though they have desire to work for the Lord, they have no place except a Sunday school teacher or something like that. But you have certain limited numbers who could work. But when you have self system, you have desire, you start from your home. You open your home and you start to invite neighbors and you start to have service. And you, you, you will go get into the ministry. And so the small group movement or cell system is thriving in our church, in, the, in Korea, in Anglican church, in Catholic church, in other Protestant church. We are all having cell system. Prayer is the key to build our Christian personality. Prayer is key to build a happy home. And also prayer is the key to the great revival. Every day, like a drawing person try to gasp air, so I'm trying to gasp through prayer to receive more anointing from the Lord. Because uh, to meet the challenge of every day of my ministry, I need a tremendous amount of anointing, peace of God, wisdom of God, understanding of God, and knowledge of God, might and discerning of God. And to receive that kind of God's peace, joy, might, I should pray. Without prayer, I can't get that kind of anointing from the Lord. So I am desperate every day. I'm a desperate person. If I don't pray, I can't carry out my work because I'm constantly under tremendous pressure and stress that my heart would be stirred up and I would lose the peace and then I would not have the joy and might and strength to carry out work of the Lord. The Yondo Full Gospel Church serves our nation and the world. The world's largest church with 800,000 members is recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records. Considered as the holy land of the Holy Spirit movement and church growth by many world Christians. Established by one of the greatest evangelists in the world, Dr. Yonggi Cho. Full Gospel Church has harvested a tremendous revival from five members to 800,000.